I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, I recently installed an M.2 solid state drive into this HP laptop that's in for service. Um, this came in with the, um, initially the plan was to swap out the hard drive for a solid state drive, but when I opened this thing up, I realized that it had an M.2 slot. And I happened to have an M.2 SATA SSD on hand, which is what this one was compatible with, uh, at least on the HP website. I mentioned uh, M.2 SATA and not um, PCIe, but anyways, the SSD is in there, and we just need to go ahead and get Windows set up on it. So this laptop, I've already backed up the files off of it. And in this case, the client is wanting to set this up for her daughter. So I'm going to be wiping and reloading Windows on this thing. So if you're actually doing an SSD upgrade, going from just a standard hard drive to a uh, M.2 SSD, um, you could probably use a disk cloning utility to copy uh, the files. However, it gets a, it gets a little complicated in the case where you have an up to an up to uh, SSD and a uh, separate hard drive for your data. Um, if you're just copying over like your operating system and stuff, you might run into some problems with it uh, not booting because of drivers or whatnot. But in this video, we're going to be setting this up with a clean install. I'm going to pop in the uh, USB stick. Now let's see if I can get into the boot menu on this thing. So again, I've already backed up files. Here we are. So F9 is boot device options. We want to select the uh, USB hard drive, UEFI mode. Select 64 bit. So yeah, this laptop came in running quite slow. Um, has an eighth, has an eighth gen Core i5 processor and I think 12 gigs of memory. So pretty decent specs you know, for a laptop. And it would see a huge boost in performance with a solid state drive. So in this case, we're leaving the existing factory hard drive installed, but we're going to be setting up the machine to use the solid state drive for the operating system and programs. So first I'm going to launch disk part. You can come in the uh, command prompt. It's kind of my personal preference um, for wiping drives. Now of course it can be done through the um, built-in utility but a lot of times I'll use disk part to do a, do a complete wipe of the drive. So going to this part and there's our drives so we can see that uh, we had the, the factory one terabyte hard drive up top and down below we have the 120 gigabyte M.2 SSD and the second one is actually the USB flash drive so I'm going to select disk zero and clean. Again, I've already backed up the files on this machine, so we're good to go there. Okay, we're done with that. So now we'll continue through the built-in wizard. Accept the license terms. Select your version and enter product key if necessary. Which on this machine it already detected the integrated key, which I believe is for Windows 10 Home. We'll select custom install. Okay, so we're going to install to here.
And while we're in here, um, actually, I can, I can, I was gonna say while I was in here, I'll go ahead and set up drive zero. I'll go ahead and partition drive zero, but I'm just gonna wait till after I get Windows installed, and then we'll do that afterwards. So we'll go ahead and proceed with installation. And we'll continue when this gets done. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way. And if you'd like me to stay... Yeah, shut up. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and proceed through this. And once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and finish up the, the main parts of this setup. Disconnect your internet. <clears throat> that way it can't handle us uh, set up a Microsoft account. I personally don't really care for them. <laughs> Download updates, install my, uh, set a Microsoft account, you know, all that mess during setup. No, I don't care for it. Don't know the person's name, so I'm going to just title it as user. Turn this all off. It's amazing how even to this day when it's 10 set up ask you about stuff like this but yet it doesn't bother to ask you what time zone you're in. You know, it doesn't it doesn't want to ask you the important questions. As you may see it is already it has already reverted the system time to uh, Pacific time, even though we're not in California. Eastern time. Also want to go ahead and kill OneDrive setup if we can. As you see it's robbing our CPU. You want to start up. Well, it might have already installed by this point, but usually what I'll do is I'll go in here and kill it and start up. I'll I'll disable the start the startup task, but let's see. So anyways, um, aside from that, we need to go ahead and partition the hard drive. So I click on this PC, manage. It'd be, no, it'd be nice once this thing installs the uh, touchpad driver. So disk management. And it's telling me that we need to go ahead and initialize the disk. And sure, we'll use GPT since this is a UEFI system. And the drive has been initialized. You're going to create a simple volume. Yeah, I would much rather assign that uh, drive D. We'll have, to, we'll have to take care of that. So we're going to sign an F for now. I'm actually not going to sign it. I drive letter this yet. I'm going to title this data. Let it format the volume. Okay, there we are. So let's go ahead and disconnect our flash drive
and that should free up the uh, the D letter. So let's see here. Supposedly, let's see. Yep, there we are. Assign this drive letter D. Generally, you'd want to have your hard drives start out, you know, with with C, and, you know, C for your main drive or your SSD. Then any additional hard drives you have would be D, E, and then in the case of the uh, built-in CD drive, that would become since we have two. Uh, hard drives, or actually an SSD and a hard drive, want the main boot drive to be C, the data drive to be D, the uh, optical drive to be E, and then remo removal can use uh, the remaining letters. So that's set up. So now when we're in File Explorer, and go to this PC, we can see that we have our C drive for our operating system and the data for our Files. Now there's a bit more that we have to do to, to complete this setup. So let's actually do this. Open up this PC. We need to go in and change where these folders are saving to. So I, I clicked on properties. So location. And let's see if I can just do it like this. Since we know our, our data drive is a D drive, we'll just change this to D. Select OK. And it will create the folder. Yeah, this touchpad is just... <laughs> I'm going to say yes on this, even though we don't have, really have any files. We'll go ahead and take care of that. Go ahead and do the same for documents. So location. We'll change this to D. And we'll complete these steps for the remaining folders. I'm going to do downloads. And do it for music. And do it for pictures. And last but not least, videos. So I figured I'm going to elaborate on what I mentioned earlier in this video. Let's say if you are going to keep your existing Windows installation and files, um, Provided that there's enough space on the solid state drive to fit it all, you could do a simple clone and then come back and do these steps to move those files over to your hard drive. But oftentimes you're going to find that there's just um, the SSD may not be big enough if you have a lot of files. So to keep that in mind, and for I believe for every user account that you create on this machine, for example, you would have to follow these steps. So, 
Now, what's happened is if we look on the D drive, you'll see that we now have these different folders here. So by default, when you're in File Explorer and you select Documents, it's actually uh, referring to the Documents folder that's on the D drive, which is the hard drive. And also, for example, when you want to download something in Google Chrome, um, the, you know, it defaults to the Downloads folder, it will automatically default to D Users Documents. D Users User and Downloads. So instead of defaulting everything to the C drive and filling it up in a matter of weeks, uh, middle, instead save, it'll instead consider the uh, hard drive as a default storage area for those items. Now, I should mention that your app data folders and stuff will still remain on the C drive, but everything else that, you've, that you have configured here will be on the D drive. So that completes the basic setup here. <clears throat> I'll, I'll be installing some other items on here, but again, that completes the basic setup for having a small SSD and a second hard drive as your data storage. So again, go to this PC. There's, the win there's where Windows is stored, and there's where the data will be stored. And as you see, there's like nothing there right now, so it's pretty much empty. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well guys, that's it for this one. But it doesn't have to be. There's plenty more videos on the channel to check out. Also, if you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you absolutely hated it, there is the alternative button as well. But yeah, please subscribe to the channel. I definitely appreciate it. And remember to click the bell so that we get notified of all updates. Also, if you're interested in things aside from computers and technology, check out my second channel. It's CubeComp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about weather, elevators, bicycling, and pretty much whatever else I figure out to upload. So yeah, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you for your support.